Follow up number 2 from a little CNC series. All links to the series itself are below. Check them out when you did not see it yet. In this episode, I will talk about a new function that I have implemented about measuring the machine's precision with a test pattern especially for PCB milling and I will show some stuff that I have made. My experience with my machine is really great so far but there is one thing that does not work as well as planned. That's the counter. The counter was supposed to count the travel distance while the PC controls the machine. Here I moved the machine with the universal G-code sender. As long as it moves slowly, the counter works correctly. But at higher speeds it starts to miscount. You can see how the display stops updating sometimes here. At that point the interrupt routine within my Arduino software is called that often that the counter cannot keep up with all calculations. On the other hand, the counter is less useful than I thought it is and it doesn't bother me enough to make it work. I added a very useful function to the firmware of my machine that allows me to measure the distance between end mill and object. I made this special cable for that, which I can plug in here. One side of the cable ends in a clamp that I can attach to my end mill. A metal plate is attached to the other side, which I can place on the milling object. I can activate the function with my control box. Once activated, the machine starts lowering the tool in steps of 1 20th of a millimeter. When the end mill touches the plate, the contact is closed and my display shows the distance. The mill goes back into its position for the next test. The test can be used to check whether the milling object is level or not. Very helpful to make sure that the milled groove is the exact same depth everywhere. This is important, especially for milling PCBs. I could have implemented a higher precision than 1 20th of a millimeter, but that's already pretty precise actually, more or less the thickness of a hair and absolutely enough for precise milling. Using this test I measured my table plate itself and found that its lowest point is more than 0.2 millimeters lower than its highest point. Worse, my table plate seemed a bit warped with being a bit higher in the middle than on the edges. This kind of sucked. I removed the table plate and repeated the measurement on the y-axis plate directly. I measured 9 different positions and wrote down the results. 0.1 mm difference between the lowest and the highest point. I guess that's not too bad. But I realized something else. This screw here actually is a little bit too high and it presses against my table plate, bending it a tiny bit. This led to it being higher in the middle. I have cut a little dimple in my plate to solve the problem. I have put back the table plate, repeated the measurements and wrote down the result. The lowest point was 0.15 mm away from the highest point. I had to correct the height of the table plate a bit and I did that by putting some layers of paper under the plate. Normal printer paper with 80 grams per square meter is approximately 0.09 mm thick and paper used for advertisements in the mail is more or less 0.05 mm. I placed the paper pieces on the table depending on whether the position was too high or not. Then I have put back the table and repeated the measurements. The result was better but not good enough and I had to repeat the process another time. After the second try, I checked the table plate one last time. Now there's only 1 20th of a millimeter difference between the highest and the lowest point. Good enough for me. For friends of us, I've created some carved wooden coasters. You can imagine that the wooden coasters are not really having an even surface, why should they? My height measuring tool came very handy here. I measured each coaster before milling and put paper under the edges that were too low. However, I was not able to always do it precisely, so I kind of accepted a height difference of a tenth of a millimeter. 
The carving is not entirely even for that reason, but that's more or less as good as it can get. Milling took 15 minutes per side. It is still an annoyingly loud process, and I went through some lengths to shield ourselves from the noise. I don't have a workshop, unfortunately, and having the machine running in our living room is not an option. I came up with another solution that made the noise at least bearable. Luckily, the door of our toilet room closes really well. Somebody at the Hackaday forum recommended to measure the backlash of the machine. The backlash defines how far the motors of the machine can move without the workbed moving and it needs to be as low as possible. He recommended to mill a circle and then carefully check the position where the start point meets the end. Sounds like a good idea to me. I created this test figure with Inkscape which contains several tests especially for PCB milling. The left part here allows it to measure the thickness of the cutting tool or, more precise, the width of the cut in groove. Each step represents 0.2 mm from 0.2 in total to 3 mm. When the groove is only 0.2 mm wide, the spikes here will be visible up to here. When, let's say, the groove is 1 mm thick, the spikes will end here. There are two circles for backlash measuring. The circle here begins and ends here for the y-axis backlash. This circle here starts and ends at this point for the x-axis backlash. These line pairs here represent the effect of 0.1 mm backlash as a comparison. When milling printed circuit boards, an important question is how thin the traces can be milled and how close they can be next to each other. The box here answers that question. The distance between these two lines here is 1.2 mm. The distance between these two lines is a millimeter, followed by 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.4 and 0 0.2. When this box is milled into a piece of printed circuit board, it will show me how wide the trace can be and still be clean. Another interesting question is how fast the mill can go while still being precise. These lines here are milled with different speeds, from 3 to 7 mm per second. I wanted to mill the pattern into this old circuit board. Again, I tried to place it as level as I can, using the height measure function of my machine. The copper board conducts logically, so I can probe directly on the surface. This worked well until... Damn it! I guess shit happens. Let's check the damage. Tungsten carbide steel milling bits are super hard, but also insanely brittle. This one here lost a piece of its edge by just scratching it over the screw. I have put in a new end mill and started milling the pattern. However, I had to cancel the process because I was really not pleased with the result. Why is the cut that bad? I remember that I accidentally dropped the new end mill on the ground before putting it in. Let's give that one a close look as well. Do you see that? It turns out that dropping the bit was enough to make it lose its tip. There's only a tiny piece of metal missing, but that's enough for an unclean cut. This is a intact cutting bit in comparison. It clearly has a sharp tip where the other one looks kind of flat. Again, I changed the milling bit. Oh, and while I was on it, I also changed the drill. Until now, I used a Proxon FPS 230E. It's a really fine tool, but this one is also more than 15 years old, and I can feel that the axle bearing is not the best anymore. I got a Proxon IBS-E, basically the industrial quality version of the other drill. I milled the pattern into the PCB and took a close look. Oh, I guess I need some comparison. Hang on, let me edit in a tiny measure tape. Each large stroke on the tape is 1 mm and each small stroke is a tenth of a millimeter. This is the starting point of the x-axis test circle. While the comparison lines have a visible shift here, 
I can hardly see such a displacement in my circle line. My X backlash is less than a twentieth of a millimeter. The same is true for the Y axis point. Again, the point would be here when there would be any backlash, but I cannot see any height difference between start and end point. I'm very happy with that. The angle lines show that the thickness of my cut in groove is around 0.4 mm. My distance lines show how close I can place two traces next to each other and still get clean cuts. The two lines with a 0.2 mm distance did not leave any copper in their middle. And also the lines 0.4 mm apart only left this thin, damaged looking copper line. With 0.6 mm distance, the copper trace looks better. This tells me that I can place two traces 0.6 mm apart as a minimum, and 0.8 mm when I want to be safe. In all cases, I anyway have to check and clean the milled board carefully, because copper leftovers like this one here can lead to short circuits. My milling speed test shows me that all cuts look actually pretty clear, regardless of the speed they were milled with. The fastest cut was done with 7 mm per second, so I will use that speed for future PCB production. There's actually a previous milling test with the pattern, which I have done before I broke the end mill. For some reason, that older end mill actually made cleaner cuts than the one now. The lines are really clean and without ridges. Even the grooves with 0.4 mm distance leave a clean line of copper in their middle. However, in this test I did not cut in deeply enough, and you can see that there are some areas where the copper was not cut away entirely. PCB milling quality depends highly on the end mill and the cutting depth, and staying consistent is difficult. I'm usually using a cutting depth of 0.3 to 0.4 mm. When you go in deeper, your lines get less clear because particles from the fiber board start pushing up copper particles. When you go in not deeply enough, the end mill will not cut through the copper. I might make another video soon, because I'm working on a project that could not be done without the milling machine. This possible next clip will show more about PCB milling and tell a bit about the software flat cam that I use now for turning PCBs into G-code. See you next time.